Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Deep Web Browsing, Dank Web Browsing, Dark Web Browsing, the part of the week where I end off my week with a lovely session of browsing the internet, and uh, as always, there is no specific theme for today, but we do have a bunch of interesting places to go to, and as always, it is a, again, nice way to capstone off everything, so while I end off my week, hopefully by the time you're watching this, your Sunday is going to be just as awesome as mine hopefully will be. That being said, let's go to the very first website. Psychological Therapy and Coaching. Oh my god, ladies. <laughs> okay, you know, you know, we see people killing each other all the time, like hitmen and shit. Now we've got, if you ever felt so mentally scarred, I guess, this, this is the site for you. You know, me mentally scarred people, well, you can get psychological therapy right here on the Dank website. Here, let's read this. In the deep web for everybody, psychotherapists Alice and John Doe. I'm, I'm, or, or, isn't that like a isn't that like a default name and shit that people use? Like John Doe, like one of those like CIA names they use to like hide who they really are. Okay. You want to change? Are you facing a challenge and need support? Are you looking for psychological therapy? Then I invite you to take a look at my website and to contact me. Here you can find information about my person and about my offers from the area of supervision coaching and psychological therapy. This, this is just therapy, <laughs> all right? I'm, I'm, I'm actually, like, looking everywhere. I'm like, where, where, where are the AR-15s being sold? What the fuck? My offer, coaching, supervision, acute treatment, short-time therapy or long-time therapy. According to your individual needs, we can shape our cooperations in different ways. So what is this, like a fucking Skype session or something? Because you're on the deep web, right? Like, uh, don't you want anonymity or is this just, like, some thing you're posting up? I'll open up something else uh, about me. I'm an educated. I'll open that up. I'll open up therapy as everything. Um, here it is about me and my general therapeutic work transparency and respectful and resource based attitude are very important for me. You have already taken many hurdles and you are the expert of you of you own life. OK. All right. I'm the expert of my own life. This is why it is an important part of my work to take your strengths and competences into account and to help you rediscover them or to make them more you to utilizable to you. Can I, can I read? What the fuck? Based on this, I invite you to explore the cause of your difficulties and try new thought and behavioral experiments. I work in methodological, uh, psychological, therapeutical way. So there are several approaches flowing in like schema therapy, systematic therapy, dialectical behavior therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy. I never took a fucking psychological class. So don't, don't ask me. Okay. I, w I was always the engineer in college. This allows a wide range of creative options and, 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 and very individual treatment and support. Wow. My background. So psychological studies at a well-known university, MSC. Thank you. Appro uh, approbation of psychological psychotherapist, a uh, scientific assistant at several institutes, psychotherapeutic activities and psycho psychiatric outpatient clients, psychotherapeutic activities in my own surgery. Uh, whew, all right, that sounds like you're doing lobotomies, woman. I don't know how I feel about that. Did the other pages load? No, they did not. But here are the offers. So the behavioral therapy is significantly recognized procedure. Uh, the approach is that the own patterns of thinking and every behavior are learned, including the problematic ones, including the psychological diseases. Psychological diseases had benefits in the past, but lost their benefits over the years. Everything can be relearned. The new approaches include also emotional-focused, mindfulness-based cognitive and biographical rudiments. The various methods allow to find very individual strategies that fit best for your concern. The first step, think over, reflect, and define your goals. Okay, so you got to think it over, you got to reflect on yourself, and you got to define yourself. All right, so it almost sounds like you know, I got to do like half the work myself. <laughs> Doctor, let's go. The initial clinical interview. So this is the first tentative interview. We get to know each other. You get further information about the therapy, uh, the payment terms. Yeah, of course, you know, the procedure. We can talk about your concerns, your goals, and your questions. Yeah. Yeah, dude. The four trial sessions. So uh, if you think we can work together, then it's time for the first four sessions. This is where they understand difficulties. Okay, so it's a mandatory four session experience. So when you're getting into this financially, remember there are four guaranteed sessions. Whatever, however fucked up you are determines how much you're going to have to pay a little bit later. Then you got the settings. Okay, so these are normally once a week, 50 minutes each in case... In some cases, it's good to invite your relatives or dependents, if possible, if you really want it, just after we are prepared well for it. According to your needs, the range of treatment options are acute treatment, short-term therapy, long-term therapy, and in some cases, the number of hours can be extended up to 80 hours? Damn, dude, that's a lot of fucking time, bro. I mean, 
I don't know. I've never stepped into a therapy situations. So I don't, I don't fucking, I don't fucking know, dude. I've never done that shit. But, um, yeah, you just contacted me for details. So how does it work? I'll send you my Q talks ID. Okay. This is the first time hearing about it. Q talks and encrypted communication platform like Skype. It's free and available for Linux, Mac and windows. You know, the deep web Skype. I just found a new video we're making. We can talk face to face over it. Please make sure that you have a solid internet connection and good microphone. So I offer English and German language. Okay, so that's where the English was a little iffy. So she's probably her and her husband, uh, or partner, or whatever the fuck, um, uh, are probably German based, and that's why. So the rate of session is fifty minutes. Is ninety dollars? Ninety dollars? Goddamn! Ninety dollars, dude. For group sessions, the fee increases individually depending on the duration and the size of the group. Okay, all right then. That's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty penny, dude. I mean, that's pretty much how you pay, how much you pay for therapy anyway, so. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much you usually pay for therapy. What is it? Isn't it like, we're just like 120 bucks or some bullshit. 100-ish, 100, 150, 200, I don't know, fuck. In our modern world of work and sport, it is often needed to advance professionally. A short coaching process can be very helpful. Okay, so this is where you can get coaching, like life coaching? All right, dude. That's great. Contact. If you think you need support, feel free to contact me anytime you like. I reply within one to two days in general. After the first short communication, I'll give you my QTalks ID, and then we can talk about your concerns in a better way and in more detail, and of course, privately and anonymously. If you want to encrypt your messages, you can use my public key, yourtherapist.asc. So that's, this is fucking new, by the way, none of the other pages load, and if I reload this, I'm pretty sure this one's not even going to load either. But what we got over here is a psychologist, and I don't know if this is exactly like the photo of her, I think this is probably some Google image diversion, but uh, it's, it's, it's a therapy website, and it's a therapy ad for people who are looking to have some form of therapy given. That's literally all that it is, there's nothing fucking sketchy about it, so... If you need a psych psychotherapist in your life and you trust them, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, this could be a fucking scam for all I care. I, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go on. I'm going to, I'm going to pray that it's real. You know, we found some weird shit on the deep web that is real. Like remember all the way back when we found a bakery, a uh, great bakery. Uh, if this is real, I, I really hope Alice and John Doe give me a contact. And if they do, I will gladly endorse you because you know, if you need a, if you need a psychotherapist, then bam, you got one on the deep web right here. People are willing to talk to you anonymously. And I can actually see why that would make sense. You know, some people may have some things that they'd rather keep privately to themselves. Anyway, so let's back out and go somewhere else. Necrophilia by Theo Derrick. Oh my fucking God, dude. You know, this is the best part about this this series is coming across the really, really heavy shit. Okay, Decayed Kisses, Pink and Purple, Tinsel Fairy of Love, and Necrophilia. Introduction. Okay, so if you're, by the way, if you're eating anything, uh, probably want to skip this section. We are talking about eating, not, not, we're talking about fucking dead people, okay? Uh, what is eating dead, oh, that's just cannibal. Don't even think too much into that. Introduction. Very few text files have been written regarding the sexual tendencies and practices of necrophiliacs. While most people would prefer to believe that we do not exist, we most certainly do, as it is obvious to anyone who visits a cemetery during our nightly rampages. Oh no. <laughs> necrophiliacs prefer to go about their business alone. Sharing is not a part of this alternate lifestyle, as the corpse usually wears out fairly quickly. This is not to say that the occasional orgy involving four or five... Oh! Oh! Oh, dude, oh, oh, it's fucking, oh, oh, po post-mortem cream pie, ugh, ugh, and about a dozen or so corpses does not occur, but it is very rare. In this file, I will describe common techniques which necrophiliacs use to gain satisfaction from their stiff fart partners. Oh, someone needs Jesus. Number two, finding a partner, okay? Finding a partner for your necrophiliac activities is definitely the hardest part. You not only have to gain access to the corpse, but you also have to find one which suits your taste. Granted, some necrophiliacs would screw roadkill if given the chance, and most of us are more discriminating. Oh man, there's standards to this, I like it. Your chances depend upon where you pick up your date. If you have access to a morgue, it would definitely be your best bet, as the corpses there are usually the freshest and have not been treated for burial. They may be a bit chilly because you've been li they've been lying in the meat locker for days, but that really should make a difference to the determined necrophiliac. Cemeteries are a bit harder to deal with, as finding a screwable corpse is harder to do. 
However, if you know how to interpret signs, this shouldn't be a problem. If a grave consists of a mound of fresh dirt and is covered with flowers, chances are that the stiff hasn't been laying there for too long. Rotting flowers on a mound usually hint to the state of the corpse as well. Some people are exclusively into porking the bo- oh. Sex with skeletons? Oh, come on, how is that even- how the fuck would you do that? It's like, it's just literally a skelly, like, oh, oh, gee, oh. Oh, how would you wouldn't even feel anything? There's nothing there. You, you, you jack. In this case, you can dig up almost any grave and hope that any habitant hasn't yet disintegrated into dust. Try to scope out a fairly secluded cemetery for your passions unless you like a sense of danger to go along with the sex. Having anyone catch you in the act is not fun, and if you are picked up by a cop, chances are you are not, you won't be able to screw anything but Bubba behind bars for the, I don't think, I don't think anybody's gonna like prison, like prison fuck you. If, if they know you've been doing dead people, I guess you're probably carrying like the ultimate STD or some shit at that point. People are generally not understanding of the necrophiliac lifestyle. Yeah. 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 N you know, I, I don't like to kink shame people, but if you're fucking the dead, seek help. Don't do that. Number three, preparation. Depending on where you are at this point, you'll either have a little or a lot of work to do. The person in the morgue will obviously have to do a little more than to open the locker, pull the corpse out, and bang away. If you're one of the cemetery people, you'll have more work to do. An experienced necrophiliac is always equipped with the bare essentials. A shovel, Vaseline, and a box of rubbers. Oh yeah, don't want to get that fucking... Don't want don't to get that stiff pregnant, though, do you? Do you now? Yeah, you never know which STDs your partner had during his or her lifetime. And believe me, it doesn't get any better after the person dies. You can put on more than one rubber for extra protection. Oh, no. But fucking a course without protection is just plain stupid unless you want to be in the next date for a necrophiliac. Yeah, you know, I, uh, could you imagine, like, your fucking cause of death on a tombstone? Like, just, just f picture this for a second. You fucked a dead corpse and you didn't use protection. Like, holy crap, you are literally branded till the end of time. God, that is sad. <laughs> if you're in a cemetery, try to drag the corpse out of the grave and behind a bush or to another secluded place. Pumping away in the grave may seem more convenient, but it is a severe disadvantage if you need to take off in a hurry. Sometimes a corpse is too fragile to be moved. In that case, make it fast. Or just break off the head, hand, or lower torso and take it with you for added convenience. Oh, this is just so sick to fucking read. Like, you know they made this just to be edgy and stuff, but it's just, ugh, it's gross. Part 4, Techniques. So now you got a stiff lying seductively in front of you, and you got no idea how to start. How you proceed from this point onwards really depends on what kind of person you are. Probably fucking depraved if you're in this situation. Now, now it's time to see how more depraved we're about to go. The corpse will last longer if you treat it gently and with care, but if you prefer to go all out, you'll probably receive greater satisfaction. There are many differences between screwing a live and a dead person that one needs to be aware of. Firstly, a corpse will never tell you to get off of it if you're being a bit rough, and it will never complain no matter what kinky sexual practices you use it for. Ugh, 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 God, oh. Oh, I mean, eating them, I'm going to throw up. Screwing a cor corpse is also much more predictable because you can raise an arm, leg, or whatever, and it'll be in that position when you reach for it again. Take the arms and gently lock them into embrace behind your back. Or spread the legs and make sex a bit easier. If you want a great blowjob, then lubricate your part. Oh, stop it! I don't, I'm going to skip that! If save for the corpses can also be recycled if treated properly. Oh, we're going eco friendly with this shit. If you're a proficient embalmer, then you can keep a corpse for over five years that isn't properly embalmed. That's free sex whenever you want it. You naturally don't want to be too rough with an embalmed corpse as they are more fragile. One final advantage of screwing corpses is that they are always in abundance. Based upon your sexual preferences, you can designate a cemetery or a morgue as your territory and always find fresh partners to screw. Plus, you don't have to resort to cheesy pickup lines or spend all your money to get a date. Necrophilia is a passion which is cheaply satisfied. Uh, goddamn. Okay, I hope this text file will encourage you to go out and try necrophilia. Don't fucking do it. Nobody here encourages necrophilia. God, no. If you think I'm not endorsing cocaine, you think I'm going to endorse you to fuck the dead? Hell no. Not many people do it, but that's precisely what makes it so much fun. It makes you feel special. If no living person would touch you with a 10-foot pole, then try having sex with a corpse. Some of them are real beauties, and it's an experience we'll never forget. There's no greater experience for a virgin than having his or her virginity taken away by... Oh, God. Oh, you can't even say that. Oh, God damn, dude. 
Oh, oh no, geez, man, there's, there's got, out of how many billions of people exist, there's got to be some fucking virgin who lost their V card to a dead person. That's so sick. Anyways, have fun, and if you have any experiences you'd like to share, them, by all means do. Maybe necrophilia will enter the mainstream because of your efforts. If necrophilia ever enters the mainstream, you know exactly what I'm going to ask you to do to me, and I don't have to say it, but what I am going to go is to the next website. White Prison Gang. Gang Identification Task Force. All right, I love it when you have, like, fucking racially charged gang websites. But now, it might be White Prison Gangs in name, but they've got black, white, Hispanic, bikers. I, I, didn't, I didn't know bikers were their own race, but okay. All right, so uh, for those of you who don't know what Prison Gangs is, I don't know how popular this is outside America, or I guess Canada or whatever, North America. Uh, I don't know if this is, like, a European thing as well, but over here, uh, if you ever look at, like, gang culture and criminal organizations, like criminal gangs, a lot of them originate from, not all of them, but a lot of them originate actually from prisons themselves, so when you look at things like, uh, Mexican street gangs, right, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not listing Mexicans as their own thing, but, like, you look at, like, Mexican street gangs, right, like, I think it's, uh, I think it's like, well, they probably, it's better to call it Latin street gangs because they come from so many different parts in South America. They'll have like a big organization. And while you might see like kingpins and like, you know, uh, gang bosses on the streets, sometimes you have a lot of the leadership come straight out of like a federal penitentiary. So you go to like one of the big like maximum security federal penitentiaries and there are like leaders of like Hispanic gangs or white gangs, black gangs sitting inside there, uh, Indian gang, any gang. I mean, let's not fucking look at race or anything like that right now. Street gangs will typically have their leadership in the prison. So like they'll, they'll, they'll smuggle a message out and that message will reach like a shot caller or like a fucking, you know, kingpin or whatever the fuck you want to call it in the street itself and they'll relay the message. So a lot of the times, the leadership actually does exist in prison. I don't know how popular this is. Like, the idea of street gangs, prison gangs... Well, street gangs are everywhere, but prison gangs exist outside of North America, right? But these are... These are the Aryan Brotherhoods, which are the, which, which I believe are like one of the biggest street gangs out there. The 2004 survey, which asked the prison respondent to identify the name of a white person gang. Table one represents the top 10 white prison gangs in America today. The ranking system here is based on the extent of the problem across jurisdiction. For example, it should come to no surprise to anyone familiar with the problem that the Aryan Brotherhood gang is listed as the number one gang on this national list. The Aryan Brotherhood, or ABs, have been documented in all 50 states, and this dates back over a decade. So, over here, they've got a bunch of gangs, all right? They've got Aryan Brotherhood, Aryan Nations, uh, Skinheads, Ku Klux Klans, Pecker Woods, which is, uh, what the fuck is Pecker? Isn't it like, uh, isn't it like a term for, like a derogatory term for white? I don't know what it is. Uh, Aryan Circle, White Aryan Resistance, uh, and by the way, you can't access any of these sites. Neo-Nazis? And the Dirty White Boys, <laughs> United Aryan Brotherhood. And then these are like the top 50 gangs like outside. So you got Simon City Royals. You got the Pagans MC. Uh, MC for Motorcycle Club for anybody that doesn't know. Uh, Fourth Reich, Insane Gangster Disciples, European Kindred, Aryan Warriors, White Pride, World Church of the Creator. That sounds like a fucking cult rather than a... I, if I read World Church of the Creator, my first thought wouldn't be White Prison Gang. <laughs> the fuck? Texas Mafia, Sons of Silence, MC. Okay, so you can, you can definitely see that a lot of these, uh, white gangs are pretty, uh, r r uh, pretty, pretty, pretty racially oriented, as all gangs are, you know what I mean? Um, contrary to what, like, fucking CNN or, like, ha ha half the, half the mainstream media will tell you, uh, you go to a prison gang, if you go, if you ever go to prison, right, like, if, let's assume that you're caught buying, like, guns off the deep web and they send you to prison, um, you, you join with what race that you are. So, like, if, you know, if, if I can, you get what I'm trying to say. You, you would go to whoever the people that look like you. That's pretty much how prison works, dude. And that's why all of them are pretty fucking racist to one another. All right? <laughs> It's the truth, is what it is. So these are white racist religious front groups. Uh, oh, World Church of the Creator, really? Creativity movement? 
I want to read more about that shit, dude. Uh, we're going to have to find that for next episode. Christian identity. Es Esatru, Norse paganism. Uh, well, we know the Ku Klux Klan is. Skinheads. Church of Jesus Christ Christian. All right, this is, this is just fucking beautiful. So if you look at, like, the black gangs, right, you've got Mandingo Warriors. No, dude. Dude, they got Mandingo Warriors. Get out of here, dude. Okay, the, the pages are finally working here, so I got them working around real fast. Uh, dirty white boys. So they got, like, tattoos over here of, like, who the dirty white boys are, but I don't really care about the dirty white boys as much as I fucking care about this. This, what is this, world church of the fucking creator? Like, what is this? I gotta see this. The creativity religion, it's formerly known as the church of the creator. P pantheistic, white separatist, white supremacist, anti-Semitic. Oh, all right, okay, so it's one, it's one of those, dude. It's one of the, fuck everyone! So yeah, you go over here, they give you, like, allies and, like, statistics and everything. Um, it's great for checking prison metas and, like, what, what, what server you're going into before you actually load in, right? But let's go up over here to what really made me giggle was, like, the Mandingo, the Mandingo Warriors, you fucking serious, dude? <laughs> what the fuck? The Mandingo Warriors are formed in 1984 by, four by a group of black offenders in order to protect themselves from members of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. So, you, yeah, as you can see, they got, like, fucking race wars going down in prison on a daily. It consists of a command Commander in chief, general, administrator of defense, minister of information and law. <laughs> Dude, they broke the law to go to prison to follow moral laws. Like, what the fuck, dude? What's the point? Go on. They got, they got a fucking, they got a judicial committee in their fucking gang. It's great. I love it. I mean, I know what it's for, but it's, it's hilarious when you read it out loud, you know? The committee appoints knights and has the power to... <laughs> it's fucking democratic! Dude, dude what, do you, what do you have, like a fucking United Nations of prison gangs inside Folsom or something? Other officers include Minister of Finance, Captain, Sergeant, and First Corporal. <laughs> Members of MW first themselves as Demo, which means sun. Their colors are red, black, and green. Okay, so the more you go into it, right... I love how they changed it to a black guy when I started checking out the black people, uh, the black gang. So, People Nation, Nation of Islam, Black Disciples, Mickey Cobras. Let's just look at the fucking... Oh, that's coming soon, dude. That's that's not even out yet. Let's go to, like, the Hispanic side. So, yeah, these are the ones, like, Mara Salvatruce, which is, like, I think the biggest gang in the system. And they've got, like, tattoos up the ass everywhere. I mean, when you got life in prison, what the fuck are you going to do, right? Like, <laughs> you're going to do whatever you can. Here's one called the uh, Tango Black. Blast. Tango Blast, Puro Tango Blast. Tango Blast includes tangos from the four original cities as well as West Texas and Rio Grande Valley areas. All right, so th these guys are throwing up hardcore gang signs. Uh, and man, there's a lot of information on this one gang, so I'm actually fairly, fairly impressed. And then you've got like bikers, so like, I don't know, you got the Pagans MC, you've got uh, the Hells Angels, which are the. Um, are the Hells Angels the biggest fucking gang of bikers? I'm not sure, but I think they are. So, they're one percenters, insignia, all that over there. They got, like, a whole history session. So, if you're ever sent over here, these are probably the best guild to recruit up with. <laughs> Other than that, you know, you I, I, I don't know what else you can do. But they, they basically got a whole network of websites that you can identify. And I guess, I guess, I guess the idea here is to help those in, in law enforcement figure shit out. You know what I mean? So, it, it's got purpose for it. It's actually interesting. So, if you're into, like, gang stuff, then you definitely can. And they've got translations for, like, everything. So, let's assume that our Japanese audience wanted to learn about white prison gangs. Then, boy, you've got them right over here. <laughs> okay, where's Mandingo Warriors? Like, the best. And, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the Deep Web video of the week. Now, compared to the last couple things we saw, especially the elevator stuff behind, this one starts off strong with some so, something that makes me immediately say, what the fuck? But this series isn't all about just saying explicit expletives whenever you see something really weird tossed up on the screen. So with a 50-second video, I expect, after seeing this first frame, to be thoroughly surprised. So let's hit play and pray to God this isn't a fucking Deep Web Art project. What the fuck is it? Is that a fucking Oh no, is this like a clown thing? Oh man, I don't like clowns and shit. Uh, ooh, okay, back off, buddy. Was that something off in the distance over there? What the fuck? Oh, there's something over there. Oh shit. Oh, fuck! Okay, that was the closest we've had to a screamer in the series. Get out of here, dude. 
You've got somebody on a rockabye over there? Stop. I don't want screamers and shit. Back the fuck off. Somebody in a hoodie. What is she saying? She's like singing a nursery fucking rhyme. Stop. Come out to play with... That was, that was actually fucking chilling. Holy shit. Like, okay. Um, I can barely fucking hear anything. And yeah, I know I have my headset set to low, but if I set it to like even higher than that, it like assaults me something wrong with Razer. But, um, yeah, they've got a, they, they've got a 50 second video that I, this time I was actually fucking scared by a deep web art video, whatever the fuck you can say. Um, especially with the fact that they have creepy shit popping up. Like obviously when you look, Oh, Oh, that's, that's not a good shot. That's not good. <laughs> Back out of here. So let's see what, let's see what we have. Okay. We have this, we have basically the shot of this woman on the tricycle. We have clowns and the clowns are just moving like little batons around and that's it. We have like twinkle, twinkle, little star nursery rhyme theme playing in the background. And over here, it's a shot of the side of a wall. And of course you can barely tell a lot of these details because it's recorded in like fucking Minecraft um, Nokia 6600 like resolution, but we've got at least, I think somebody's standing all the way back there, like in that shot. And then this guy pops up. So like, you know, you go, you go up over here, you think somebody's there, this dude pops up, but like the thing is, there's no sound cues. It's just nursery rhyme. So like the screamer, I guess could have been way worse if they just had like, ah, sort of popped in. Right. But they didn't do that. So I guess it wasn't intended for, like, screamer effect. Then you've got this, like, young woman or guy or whatever the fuck, just, like, on this rockabye, like, little horsey. And, and, like, yeah, you know they're trying to be edgy over there, but, like, this shit's genuinely unnerving. Like, listen to her. Like, it's just some crappy recorded, like, song playing, and then they've got this, like, flickering light that you think something's gonna happen, right? You think something's gonna happen... And then you get, like, cucked out of it because nothing ever happens in the end. So that's about all the analysis I can give. Again, I feel like I'm missing a good chunk of the video just due to the fact that I'm literally not seeing everything. <laughs> like, I couldn't be seeing everything. It can't, this literally can't just be it. But at the same time, I feel like this is part of, like, a set of videos or something of the sort. So for me, what it looks like is a video from the era of the clown meme. I don't know how many people remember it, but, um... Do you remember back in the day, like, people would, like, look under their security cams outside their door and see just, like, clowns standing over there? Like, you know, just, just waving high and shit, like the weird, weird fucking crap? So I think, in a way, it's from all the way back then. I mean, it certainly looks like it's all the way back. For, it looks like it's from fucking 1994 with this resolution. But uh, I don't think this is recent by any situation. I think this is all the way back from the clown epidemic for all, for all things. But, yeah, shit, let me know what you guys think about this deep web video. I personally think it's a little fucking bit out there, but not much more to analyze than nursery rhymes, creepy person with the mask, and something that actually scared me for once, <laughs> as far as I'm ashamed to admit it. But that being said, let's go somewhere else. Conspiracy theories created by Encryptor666. Welcome to my website. This is a place for conspiracy theories. If you like conspiracy theories, you will like this page. I'm still trying to learn HTML. Okay, so it's one of those passion projects. Extras. The website is still under constructions. Okay, quote, don't always believe what you see. All right, you know, motherfucker, if I, if I see... If I see a truck running into another truck on the road, I'm going to believe that a truck ran into another truck. I guess it's trying to make me feel more observant. I get the quote, okay? I'm just trying to be a bitch. But let's go to About Me, okay? Let's open some of this up. I, I usually like reading the About sections for a lot of these people. And let's open up each and every single one of these pages. Because I, because because now that you mentioned conspiracy theories, I am all fucking ready for some conspiracy theories. So what is this? I'm not, I'm not going to give away a lot of info because this is the dark web and I'm not trying to be stalked or killed. This is the first website I've created myself. I try to test my skills and post conspiracy theories for Tor users like myself to see. Another thing, I am also learning how to hack. Awesome, dude. Good, good stuff. So what is this? These are, these are, uh, conspiracies, right? So this is number one. V2K, voice to skull electronic harassment. The government is using voice to skull technology to manipulate and capacitate. Dude, it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, okay? If you're gonna rev your Civic, do it some other fucking time. God damn it. It's, it's, it's literally some Civic this dude just revs up all the time. God damn you Just because you, you painted it red 
It doesn't make it a Lamborghini Ferrari level fast, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyways, mostly to steal shooting, burning, cooking, and mind reading and mind controlling people, including children, with these weapons are crimes against humanity and horrible violations of human rights. Effects scratching, stomach pain, urge to urinate, defecate, diarrhea, coughing, sneezing, burping, farting, sleepiness, yawning. Kid That's literally fucking every single thing that has happened to every single person at any point in the world. Electronic weapons are also used to attack our brain, read our thoughts, sub vocal speech, make you hear voices, tit and symptoms, plant thoughts into your head you cannot distinguish from your own thoughts unless you are aware. Dream manipulation. So basically the government has a way for literally injecting voices into our heads. Do I fucking believe that? I probably not. I mean, I think that we would discover such technologies that the government did too. But then again, what do I know? I'm just some random Indian guy on the internet. Let's go to another conspiracy. The moon landing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> if, I, if I had a nickel for every time I heard the moon landing was fake, dude. Uh, okay. Well, how is the moon landing fake? I think the moon landing was faked by using a film studio. I say this because during the televised program of the landing, you can see the Apollo land, but no dust is kicked up during impact. Not only that, but when the camera was pointed at the astronaut, you could clearly see there was a wire. The wire was used for a no-gravity effect. In the, astron in the astronaut's helmet, you could see the reflection of a stage light they used in the studio. The flag. When the flag was planted, it was flying. That should not be possible as there's no... So basically, I think what they're, what they're saying is... And I remember this vividly. In high school, I had this, like, debate thing, and the one thing I got to debate was a fucking moon landing. And the person I was paired up to debate with was a fucking, a fucking ultra nerd about this moon landing conspiracy. Like, I'm sitting there hearing things about vibrations and shit. Uh, or something like, uh, vi vibrations or whatever, like not like I, I, me I mentioned that like jumping could, could, could I, I don't know. And I was proven fucking wrong. So they're basically saying, though, in the flag in the, in the moon landing was moved a little bit. You can check the video out and see for yourself. Uh, they said that is indicative of wind, right? And some people say that's like vibrations from the astronauts moving around close to the flag. Once again, you know. Shit's just weird, all right? That's all I can really fucking say about the situation. Do I think that the U.S. landed on the moon? Probably, dude. It's the United States. They got the money to do it at the time. I mean, it's just a giant dick contest you got to share with the Russians anyway. So, I don't know. Maybe so, <laughs> right? But let's go. Apple, a technology company. All right, dude. All right, one of these. Okay, let's see. Conspiracies. Apple slows down your old device when a new one comes out. What you wanted people to buy your new product, and they're using an older generation, well, you would slow it down and stop supporting, so it basically forces you to buy a new project. Google results, so these are the evidence, shows many people have searched the term, why is my iPhone slowing down? Uh, Apple has said that they slow it down. Okay, this is the battery thing that Apple did. Basically, what would happen is, like, uh, the iPhone battery would, like, start to fucking die uh, at like 10% life, and that's because the battery was already degraded to the point that the processing power uh, was just too strong for that battery to run at the time. So unless you started to battery cycle pretty often, then you wouldn't have an accurate reading. So they just down clocked the device so that the battery would, it was just some gritty way to do it. Now you can switch it back to normal speed at your own risk. But anyways, uh, predictive programming is a subtle form of psychological conditioning provided by the media to acquaint the public with planned societal changes to be implemented by our leaders. If, and when these changes are put through, the public will already be familiarized with them and will accept them as natural progressions, thus lessening possible public resistance and commotion. 9-11, showing the Twin Towers falling from an airplane, where it has been shown, The Simpsons, where in the world in Carmen San Diego, Real Ghostbusters, Phillips Ad, Demolition Man, Futurama. Imagine if you created a microchip that is supposed to be implanted into the skin for evil purposes. What do people suggest? reject it? A way to get the people to do it is to show hints, putting it in movies, TV shows, ads. That way it doesn't come as a shock and it'll be more acceptable. Okay, I can kind of see that actually, you know, like I can kind of see spending five years, six years to change, to, to like the same thing with, I don't know, maybe the SJW shit that's pushed on us like crazy. Um, if you spend like five, six years doing that, eventually five, six years later, it does become the fucking norm. Like it doesn't matter what any resistance movement wants to do. It becomes the new norm. So I can see that, that isn't a conspiracy. I can see that as reality, dude. Uh, 23 and me. A company that uses your saliva to find out your genetics and risk factors. What is a good way to collect everyone's saliva and keep it for nefarious purposes? Sell it as a product with a front such as find out your heritage, 
But when it is used to build an FBI database, how about selling it to your insurance company? What does this matter? Well, if you commit a crime, your DNA is in a database. Why does the insurance thing matter? If the insurance will go up if you're at risk, how about wanting to get a job? They can basically fuck you over. How about age reversing? What if they keep your DNA so they can sell it to you for a high profit? Um, sure. Absolutely. Sure. You know, I, I fucking believe that right there. Uh, God damn it. Apparently the CEO of this company is sisters with the CEO of YouTube. Well, I mean, if it's anything like YouTube, <laughs> I don't have high hopes for 23 in me either. <laughs> God damn it. But uh, let's go somewhere. Uh, the next conspiracy is John F. Kennedy. JFK died on 1963. He was assassinated by former U.S. Marine Lee Harvey Oswald. Did Lee O. kill JFK for wanting to refuse UFO alien truth? I think yes. JFK claims that he's seen a UFO and wanted to know more about them and demanded that the CIA give him access to the files. Here's the quote. I'd like to tell the truth about the alien situation, but my hands are tied. He was killed 10 days after he wanted the UFO truth. I didn't fucking know that. That's creepy, man. JFK sees a UFO. JFK demands information about the CIA about aliens. 10 days later, JFK is uh, assassinated by Leo Harvey Oswald. I do believe JFK was assassinated so he would not find out the truth about aliens. It's really not that far-fetched. The CIA has done many questionable things, such as MK, Ult MK Project. So... I didn't fucking know that. That's sketchy as shit, dude. CIA, bro, chill out, man. Straight up assassinating my presidential boys because they ask about Ayla Mouse? That's fucked. I'm not going to talk about Ayla Mouse. All right, no red lasers. We're good. We're good. No red lasers. We're fine. Let's go. Let's go to the. Let's go over here. Mind control. Oh, we know about MK Ultra. Come on. Uh, yeah, it's uh, basically that whole drug drug project that the CIA was using. Fucked up stuff. Definitely check into it. De definitely look into that shit. But uh, I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna head out to another website. All right, so uh, power outage, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, a power outage just kicked in for literally like a minute and a half. Kind of weird. <laughs> kind of, kind of, kind of spooked me out. First time it ever happened during a deep web video. But uh, luckily, all the recording happened just fine. Uh, I recorded in a non-volatile format, so everything was fine. Uh, nothing really was lost in just uh, two, three minutes of my time. But looking through this base, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is just a chilling little look at what is a Soviet base. It's kind of one of those places that I guess you really couldn't access. And uh, now that you're looking at sort of this freeze frame in time, let's go to, like, more diverse locations. They have, like, uh, islands that they've covered over here. And this, I think, is more recent, obviously, 2017 so you know it's still not super recent but it is far more recent than 2014 and uh, over here we have what looks to be a i believe uh herschel island which is in the arctic in the north of canada and just from itself, it looks like a little tiny settlement that's just sort of out there. And you can see over here, they like cut wood and shit. And uh, this is where they like store, obviously, the wood in the shed. And just like from the profile shot of it, yeah, this is like a little small community that at one point existed. So it's like actually looking at a real life ghost town, you know what I mean? And you go to the Hachijo Royal Hotel in Japan, which is, that's a fucking big place, dude, in Japan that's abandoned? God damn. It's, it looks like it's in the rural part of Japan anyways it kind of looks like some fucking north korean administration building dude i guess it's it's probably abandoned from the era right because you go to like north korea and they're still stuck in that soviet era world so over here they still got that old car just like just it, they're rusted to shit and it, it looks it looked like at one point it's a nice place but right over here you get to some last of us shit dude this is like some last of us stuff right now man and yeah dude the beds are all still there like you can look at the mattresses and that shit still intact like they got like a little radio lamp here. This is like a this is like a pretty posh hotel at one point, dude. And you go down to like Adox Island in Alaska, and that looks straight up Death Stranding right there, dude. It's crazy. They got little like uh, artillery artillery shots going up into the air. This probably was like an old military installation, and then at some point they just had to abandon that shit, you know. And then Doblo Island. So this is where again? This is in Ontario. Okay, so this is literally in my province, and they've got uh, they've got this little like that that looks straight up like it's uh, taken out of that Gillies in the Mist mission from COD 4 dude that is that is that's a beautiful shot my lord I gotta take up urban exploration man I gotta make that my new hobby would you be interested if Muda went urban exploration I would really like to do it dude to take like little videos of these kind of places you know exploring the parts of the world that maybe you shouldn't be 
exploring. But um, they got, like, lighthouses. I get, well, not lighthouses, little towers and everything. How much you want to bet, like, half these are haunted by ghosts? Ah, we went to a haunted island. Oh, boy. There's, like, a haunted island over here. And, yeah, shit, that place looks straight sketchy, dude. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This place is sketchy as shit. It looks pretty bad. Oh, no. And they've got sets from movies that are now abandoned, I guess. And then they've got a Chinese fishing bill. Wow. That's fucking ethereal, man. I love that shit. I, I would love to go over to a place like this, man. It looks so pretty, but at the same time, it, it's so sad because you can sort of see where it was like bustling at one point, And now like nature's taking a hold of that shit again, dude. It's like something you'd see in like Horizon Zero Dawn, you know what I mean? Like old earth shit. Oh, and it's not, it's probably not even that old. It's just, wow. It's, it's like a real life Minecraft. Oh, oh no. Oh yeah. This place is sketchy. It's like the Mexican Island of dolls. No, no, thank you. No, it's not happening. Not at all. Ghost Island of Boston. That's, that's scary. I'm sorry to say that's scary. Like you're seeing the indents of people still in there. Mm -mm -mm, not happening. Boy, somebody, somebody really loved their Jesus as much as they loved their, uh, or <laughs> the Red Sox, dude. God damn. God damn. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was another episode of Deep Web Browsing, Dank Web Browsing, Dark Web Browsing, the part of the week where we take a look at the danker side of the internet. The series where we cover the weirder aspects, the, the Tor Relay protected networks. So you've seen some interesting conspiracy uh, websites. We've seen a lot of gang... This is a pretty educational episode. We learned about gangs, um... Uh, conspiracies and fucking dead people. And we had the one video to actually scare me. So landmarks, dude, La la landmarks, landmarks for sure. That being said, let's back out and go somewhere else. And by go somewhere else, I mean, ha ha have a good day. I'm out. <laughs>